In this video we're gonna make a camera that's gonna look in the direction where the player is aiming. Put the camera away! Let's start off by going into the scripts folder and cleaning up a bit. First we're gonna create a new folder and call this one movement. Then let's drag in the mover, the player movement, the player rotation and the rotator class. Next let's create another folder which is gonna be called animation. And let's drag the legs animator in here. And the last folder that we'll need is gonna be called camera. Once you have it, open it and inside it let's create a new C-sharp script called camera controller. Now let's select the main camera object, drag the script onto it, then let's open it and let's start coding. As always we'll start off by cleaning the script of everything that we don't need. Next up let's put the class inside a namespace called topdown.cameraControl. For now let's make the camera follow the player. For this purpose we're gonna need a private transform called player transform and let's serialize the field so we can assign the reference in the editor. Then we're gonna create an update method where we're simply gonna say that the transform's position is gonna be equal to the player transform.position. Alright, that's enough for us to go back into the editor and test the result, but first don't forget to drag in the player reference. And if you press play now, you're gonna see that the screen is gray, or in your case, it might be blue. Why is this happening? Well, if you check out the camera's default position, you're gonna see that it's positioned at minus 10 on the Z axis. And if you manually set it to zero, you're gonna see the same issue. So let's get back into the code and fix this problem. For this purpose, we're gonna create a private float called Z position, and we're gonna make it equal to minus 10. Now, instead of assigning the player's transfer position on all the axes, we're gonna create a new vector free, use the player transfer position on the X and Y, and for the Z, we're gonna use our new float. That should be enough to fix the issue. Let's go back into the editor and test it out. Much better, we can actually see the game now, but this is still not the behavior we need. We wanna point the camera slightly in the direction where the mouse is positioned. And this way the player can see the enemies easier and it will make the game slightly more dynamic. So let's jump back into the code and first of all let's determine the mouse position in world coordinates. For this purpose we're gonna create a vector free called mouse position and inside of it we're gonna make a reference to the main camera then use the screen to world point method and pass in the input.mouse position. Now let's do a quick brainstorm and let's pretend I have drawing skills in order to explain what we need to do in order to achieve the behavior that we want. Let's say that this is our player and this is our mouse. Let's say for example that the player is positioned on 0 and 0 on the x and y axis and the mouse is positioned at 2 and 2. Our task is basically using a vector variable to calculate the difference between these two points and then finally positioning the camera somewhere along the line of this vector. So let's see how we can do this in our code. First of all let's create a vector free variable which is going to be called camera displacement. And it's going to be equal to the mouse position minus the player transform position. Which is basically this black arrow right here. Now to get a point alongside it we're gonna need a new float which I'm gonna call displacement and I'm gonna make it equal to 0.15 for now. But just to make it easier to tweak and see the results let's make it a serialized field so you can change it directly in Unity. And just to be more concise I'm gonna rename this variable to displacement multiplier because that's what it is basically. And then let's use it to multiply the difference between the mouse position and the player transform. Also make sure to use parentheses because first of all we want to calculate the difference and then multiply it. And if you need a visual representation of this vector it's basically this red arrow right here. If we increase the multiplier to 0.5 it's going to be equal to half the difference between the mouse and the player and if we increase it to 1 it's going to be equal. I think you get the point but basically by increasing the multiplier we control how far away the player is going to aim. You can actually turn this into a cool game mechanic if you change the multiplier depending on the gun your player has. So for example if the player has a sniper rifle he will be able to see further away. But let's continue. Our next and final step will be determining the final camera position and assigning it to our transform. For this purpose we're gonna need a new vector free variable which is gonna be called final camera position and it's gonna be equal to the player transform position plus the camera displacement. Also let's not forget to tweak the z position of this vector, otherwise we're gonna see the grey background again. 
And now we can just take the final camera position and assign it to the transform position. Now let's switch back into Unity and see the result. As you can see we have our desired behavior and if you want to tweak the multiplier and set it to 0.3 for example, this effect will be amplified. I wouldn't recommend raising the multiplier too much though, because take a look at what happens if you set it to 0.9. It basically gives you infinite scrolling and it's hard to control. Maybe it could be interesting if you want to implement a drone feature, but definitely not for aiming. So I'm going to reduce the multiplier to 0.2 and keep this value. I want to thank everyone that made it this far and don't forget to like, subscribe and leave a comment because the algorithm likes this stuff. And finally I want to say huge thanks to all the supporters. George Mulcahy, Umut, Qmash and PD100 Academy of Art. Keep making games and stay tuned for the next episode.